Today, Portland's South Waterfront has all the amenities of a modern city neighborhood. Aha, here we go. It's right here. But if you look closely, you can still see traces of a dirty industrial past. This has been here since the late 40s or 50s or 60s. I don't know when this was tossed over here. This chunk of metal came from the hull of a warship, one of many left to rust on the banks of the Willamette River. I notice here there's a big shackle. Paul Fishman spent years digging through the toxic mess. In the late 40s, through the 1950s, into the 1960s, we didn't have environmental laws. They did not know that, oh, this is full of PCB and that could cause cancer. They didn't know that. Right here, this is a fire brick from a ship's boiler. This was here, we, we kind of left it. Why well, pull it all out and put different rocks in there? Let's just leave this. I mean, in an engineering sense, it works. It also says to people, hmm, there was something else here, historically. Wonder what that was. We will never fail us. The victory sleep will be complete, we know. During World War II, shipyards were the pride of Portland. The victory fleet will soon defeat the fall. At their peak, they were launching a new ship every four days. Some would boast they were building ships faster than Hitler could sink them. President Roosevelt told Americans these ships would bring liberty to Europe. He called for a seven-day work week to build these liberty ships even faster to win the war. While we are proud of what we are doing, this is certainly no time to be content. We must build more cargo ships and still more cargo ships. As soon as one ship was launched, the keel was immediately laid for the next ship on that building way. Speed was encouraged and many times quality suffered. But these ships were designed to be essentially expendable. If the United States got two trips of cargo across to support the troops, it was a job well done. After the war was over, the victory ships were obsolete, but they still had value as scrap metal. Emery Zeidel turned one of Portland's wartime ship building sites into the nation's largest ship breaking operation. But the ship breaking wouldn't go nearly as fast as the ship building. For decades, the Zeidel dock on Portland's south waterfront was full of warships waiting to be cut up and sold for scrap. Mounds and mounds and mounds of metal just one heap after the next. It was very rusty and gritty, and um, you'd kind of go, who, who would want to go out there? From 1946 through the 1970s, the business dismantled around 300 ships. So I remember Dad would come home, and he would say that we could go down and go on a particular ship before they started to dismantle it. They had that kind of rusty smell. You know, I just cert there's certain smells you sort of can't forget. Bill Goble started working in the scrapyard in 1960 when he was just 16 years old. So these pieces, they've come off of the ships when we were in the dismantling days. Stern pieces, and uh, that's a bow piece there. Some ship hulls were filled with concrete for ballast. Those pieces, and anything else that didn't have scrap value, were left on the banks of the river. The very end of it, you know, you'd have everything cut down to the last five or six feet of the ship, and then that's what these would be. The company stopped dismantling ships in the late 70s, but the process of cutting up ships left a lot more than metal and concrete behind. When Jay Zidell took over the business from his father, he inherited a polluted wasteland. The world's changed a lot since my dad was young and active and growing the business. We now know that there were uh, materials on the ship that, that represented environmental issues, uh, lead-based paint, the asbestos, PCBs, and other things that we ran across. But at the time we were doing it, nobody knew that they were hazardous. The pollution covered 30 acres of land and half a mile of riverbank. Reviving the site would be a massive undertaking. This is certainly the biggest project I've ever done. The Zydells hired Fishman, an environmental consultant, to oversee a voluntary cleanup. I said, guys, I will do this, but I'm only gonna work half time because I need the other half time to see a therapist to figure out why I'm saying yes. <laughs> this riverbank, before we started, was very, very steep, covered with all kinds of rubble, concrete, asphalt, 
metal, all kinds of industrial and urban debris that had been dumped here. It was truly a mess. Cleaning it all up meant clearing debris and removing the most contaminated soil and river sediment. They covered the land and a portion of the riverbed with a thick layer of clean sand, dirt, and gravel. This entire property now is capped. So there's a protective barrier of at least two feet of clean material between people, wildlife, fish, etc. So we've cut off the source of contamination. Then they started planting. It's really a whole ecosystem that we've, I don't like to use the word restored because it's not the way it was two or 300 years ago and beyond, but it's really a, a simulation of a very native riparian riverbank. And we're very, very proud of it. Look, it looks great. By cleaning up an ecological mess, the Zydell family redeemed their own tainted land. It took 20 years and $20 million, but now they have a clean piece of riverfront property and a chance to be part of Portland's next chapter of reinvention and redevelopment.